Hey, what's going on? Hey, this is Admin from Plex Scott. So here to do another lovely video on try number three. So Mike was working on the second one and well, issues on my computer on the first one. So every time I do this, I just get a little bit smarter. <laughs> so, but anyways, hey, the whole purpose of this video is just to kind of show you how to utilize VMware Workstation and install Ubuntu. Uh, as simple as it may seem, it could be a little bit difficult and challenging for others. And even some of you who may have used a VMware workstation, uh, it's really easy to make simple mistakes or logistical mistakes that, well, uh, will set you up for success. Um, in most cases, you do failure if you don't get it right. So anyways, we got Ubuntu. Uh, I'm using a VMware workstation. I have a copy of 18.04.1. Um, typically, if you got an older one, you can do an upgrade, but uh, ignore that. So basically, first thing you need to do is obtain Ubuntu VM... Ignore Ubuntu. Obtain VMware Workstation. So all you have to do is Google it. You get a 30-day free trial. Uh, like I said, just search the internet how to go about it. And uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. But long story short is that this gives you the ability to utilize, well, even an older Windows machine that you got laying around. This is my gaming machine. Uh, and actually run Plex Guide on your system. And you'll be surprised that even if you have a gaming machine um, that you can run VMs with no issue uh, while gaming, because it really depends on your hard drives and all those other things. But we're gonna talk about all those factors here shortly. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new virtual machine. So uh, avoid playing with custom because some of you may want to. And the first thing is to do is to have a copy of Ubuntu like I mentioned earlier. So you can see I already have it appointed. Uh, the good thing is, is that VMware Workstation 14 does detect and automatically install the drivers. Uh, older versions of VMware, for some reason, they were just broken and I had to manually install drivers, which was always a, a pain, definitely when you didn't know what you were doing at the time. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create uh, a username. So I'm going to create it uh, home PG, home PG, whatever you want it to be. But please do not forget your um, username and password. Uh, those are those are very, very key. Do not forget those. You'll find yourself making a VM again or kind of losing half your stuff. So. Um, it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna name this? Which will show up on the left-hand side. So there you can see my previous old copy. Good times, right? Uh, you missed out because I had uh, I had a share, I had an IP of uh, another VM uh, that was using the same one and I was kind of busy troubleshooting. Okay, so PGV video test two. So the location does matter where you put this because um, first you need to consider how much disk space you have and you need to consider what type of drive you're running and what you're trying to accomplish. So this C drive is a Samsung 960 NV, NV disk. So I'm just trying to show you. Uh, nope, definitely not that. So you can see right here, I have a fast uh, disk, you know, so a good amount of space. Um, so typically this is like a, a Plex, I mean, this is a test V virtual machine. So if you have like, you know, okay amount of disk space, you're making a test virtual machine, it shouldn't really matter too much on your disk space. but um, I do also have a regular solid state and two eight terabyte slow hard drives. So now you call them slow, right? Um, but if you're going to do a whole bunch of torrenting and unpacking and a whole bunch of stuff, and it's your only disc in your machine and you're gaming, you're going to find that everything is going to come to a crawl on your system. So pay attention to where your location is and the size of your drive. Typically, uh, we'll talk about sizes here. The maximum disk size. So if you're going to run a test, I learned that running 20 to 40 is okay. I, I typically do 40. If you plan on having this for the long haul, uh, if you're going to actually create an actual machine on your system to actually do uploading and downloading, you need to make more space. Trust, trust me on it. Uh, one thing you need to be cognitive of is, is that, um, what's the best way to put this? If you have a 100 gig disk in size, right? And you're like, well, I got 80 gigs free, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Do not do that, right? Because what's going to happen is, is when you run out of size, I mean, when you run out of space, what's going to happen is, is your virtual machine will just come to a grinding halt, right? Not a good day. Second, when you run VMware, it actually runs a file in the background that actually can get quite big. So I've seen it where I've run a 200 gig file, a 200 gig uh, VM, and there's like this ridiculous like 60 gig paging sleep file that, that existed. So if you don't have enough disk space, it's gonna cause you problems. Uh, also, I think it does sleep. Yeah, like what we talked about. Okay, um, and then another thing you have to consider too is, is that if you take snapshots, what snapshots are basically is you can take a, a backup copy of your disk and kind of store it. 
Um, if you take snapshots, that's going to take up space. So typically, though, I would not use more than 50% of your disk space, even though you might be more tempted to. I'm um, telling you this from lessons learned. I've been a computer guy. I played with VMware at ESXi, and I still have made bone, bonehead moves as simple as that. So uh, another thing about your specs here, I remember you, uh, you saw that I clicked uh, the set of preferences. But another thing you have to pay attention to here is you do not want to give out more than, I'd say, like 60% uh, of your of your system to to for processors and your memory the reason for it is is because your operating system right running here in the background is you know running all kinds of processes so if you allocate it all to your vm it's going to be a really bad day the good thing about vmware is that even though you allocate let's say this this system has 32 gigs of ram so if i was a bonehead and allocated 38 it's it's not an issue until i exceed the maximum amount of memory so keep in mind that um it's 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 you know you put what you need and, and kind of go from there. So for a test VM, uh, because I have 32 gigs of RAM, I just I usually sign it for. Um, also, if you run a typical 6700 processor, 7700K Intel processor, you know, um, you typically have four processors here and two threads. So I wish they would just call it threads, um, but it's the same concept. So technically you'd have a total of eight cores. Um, I believe VMware workstation allows you to go up to 16. So uh, something you might have to keep in mind of. Uh, yeah, because there's 16, and there's 16. Yeah, it, it may let you do more. I, I have no idea, but I just remember some 16 cap for some reason. Um, you can assign more if you want, but you're, just because you assign more process to your system than what you have doesn't do you any good for performance reasons. So from here, uh, I do have a total of eight processors in the system, right? So you can do that. You can do this. It, it doesn't really matter, uh, honestly. I, I thought it did, but it, it doesn't. So that would be eight, but I'm not gonna all, assign all eight to the to the VM. So for a test VM, I, I just would do like two. Um, if if this was like my production VM and I don't have a lot going on and I was doing like light gaming, you know, I could typically get away with four, you know. So um, do not assign all your processors. I'm sorry if I emphasize that, but I, I trust me, I'm, I'm em emphasizing it. So we're gonna do four or two. Okay, so Nat, um, you wanna change this network connection to breached. Um, you could leave it as NAT if you're not going to try to access it via terminal, but I would highly recommend to do bridged. If you do bridged, basically what happens here is that your router is actually going to think that this virtual machine is another computer on your network. Trust me, for networking reasons and for communication reasons, it's a good thing, right? Uh, if you don't know much about networking, you just select bridged and you'll see why later on when we share this out. Other than that, everything else you can leave alone, display, whatever, just leave it alone. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and power this on. One thing I forgot to mention too um, in this video is, is that the type of uh, VM, uh, the Ubuntu that you're going to download, do not download do not download Live Edition. Just just think about what that means. If you download Live Edition, you're going to run into all kinds of problems. You're going to ask why this isn't working. That's not working. Please do not install Live Server. That that's meant more to be kind of a a temporary throw up of something. Um, another thing too is, is I, I, I you can you can download uh, Ubuntu Server. <coughs> But I tell people to typically go with uh, desktop. Why? Because it, it's not really that resource intensive unless you're just running some like old laptop and you got like crap processors, maybe running some Celerons. The good thing about having to use interface, it's not it's not that you're going to use the inter user interface to control your VM. It's that sometimes you may have to do something to your VM, like some kind of weird partition or something. And you're going to be thankful that you have a user interface installed on your system. Um, what we're going to show you in this video here is basically being able to <clears throat> is going to be able to uh, access your system via uh, Ubuntu or terminal. So the typical install on here on a solid state maybe takes about like roughly four minutes. I think that's, I pretty much gave you most of the tips. Why? Because I kind of already ran this twice in my head. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Um, for your networking, it's very important that um, when we set this up, that uh, like I was telling you about the bridge, um, we're gonna give it a static IP address. Uh, for some of you who are not well versed in networking, because it is, can be a learning curve, is that basically when your version of Ubuntu starts up, usually it's a DHCP, meaning that your router typically just gives out a free address that's available. You don't wanna do that in this case, unless you're just gonna jump on this computer and just control it all from here. Um, you want to sign a static IP address. The reason is because when you log into your box, you want a consistent address. Imagine trying to write a letter 
and you had to every time you tried to write the letter you some you always had to look up to see if your address changed so um we're gonna like i said i'm gonna give you a demo of like you know um putting your uh static ip address in um for some of you who uh don't know what putty is you'll download putty and you'll use this to access your system and if you look at the guides in uh, plex guide and you see something about like installing ubuntu um on your Windows 10 machine, I would. The reason is because you'll use it to SSH in. It's a lot better than PuTTY, and it just works very well out of the box. Some of you may be like, "Well, I got Ubuntu. Why not? Why? Why? Sh why can I not use, uh, you know, Ubuntu and, and just uh, install Plex Guide, right? You're not gonna want to do that. So right now, this is this is a non-existent VM that's running. Okay, so let me go ahead and type Ubuntu. Okay, so uh, I tried, you know, I tried to install Plex Guide on, on my native Ubuntu here, and it will look like it works, but you'll run into issues with Docker and the user interface, see, like, so this is the old, old setup. So um, it, it, it won't work, just trust me on it. Uh, your startup services don't work. Um, so, and I, I've spent many laborious hours trying to look into it. So, and the reason for it is it's more on Windows fault. For example, they didn't allow Ubuntu to allow their own startup processes to start up. That sounds kind of stupid, but uh, you'll, you'll find out if you try. So basically I'm gonna use this to SSH into this machine right here. And the cool thing is, is that uh, in having a powerful computer, you don't have to stay on it. So like right now I'm in my office. I don't really like, typically like to sit here. I have a MacBook 12. You may see some of my videos with that. And I love that computer, USB-C charging, two pound laptop. I can just use terminal, log in to my remote system here and do what I need to do. So you could tell that this is still loading up. So yeah, there it is, installing the virtual machine tools. Perfect. So they, they, really, they really improved on this. Okay, but we're still waiting. Okay, so it looks like we are a go. So let me go ahead and log in here. So there's two big things that you basically have to do. You have to make sure that you set up your static IP address, you know, if you want, and then you gotta install SSH. That's what I remember I had to do for 16, but we'll, we'll double check here. Okay, so right now we're gonna go ahead and set up a network for it. I think usually that shows up as working, but anyways. Let's go to wired settings, network, and let's go ahead and assign it an address. So you can see right now it's assigned 119 on the machine. You don't wanna do that. So you're gonna go ahead and click manual. There's three types of uh, class addresses, class A, B, C. Long story short, you need to pay attention to what your router is using. So if you see a 192, that's a class C. If you see a 172, I believe it's a class B. And if you see a 10 dot something, that's a class C. Um, most routers on home networks will start, will, will, will have a gateway address of this. So 1.1.1. Um, and then the net mask, oh, well, kind of getting ahead of myself here. So what I'm doing is, is I'm giving it an address here. So we're going to go ahead and assign it an address. Uh, one, let's go with 170 because I know it's not used. And sometimes if you run a lot of devices on your network, you may even have to go into your uh, configuration and even block off a range of addresses. Um, you'll learn about that in CCNA. D DNS, you're gonna go ahead and put 8.8.8, .8 right? And then you're gonna go ahead and put 8.8.4.4. .4. And basically what this is, is this reaches out to Google um, and uh, resolves uh, domains for you. If you forget to put that in the manual, you'll it looks like your internet works and it doesn't look like your internet works. So right now I'm not getting a network icon. Usually on the auto updates, uh, it shows up. Let me see, ping 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, good. So that icon is just a little mysterious right now. So even though you change your address, guess what you gotta do? You gotta reboot, right? So sudo reboot. And kind of go from there. So like I said, we gave it the IP address of uh, 170. So if I bring up the Ubuntu here, right? I should be able to see it on the network. It's rebooting still, so I highly doubt it will show up. You can see it in the background right now. So let's just give it a minute. 
So good, my machine's up. So usually I have to install SSH in order to make it work. So let's see if anything has changed. Uh, SSH, and then remember, it's gonna be the username and then it's gonna be the address that you put. See, so it says connection refused. Why? Because SSH is not enabled. It, it won't tell you that it's not enabled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install it. So when you look at instructions installing SSH, you'll see a client, you'll see a server. You're gonna be like, it doesn't matter. Install the server, not the client. You need to, you need to install the server version. So let's see if I can get the command right without looking it up. Uh, sudo su, so I'm just going to root just to make everything easy because I don't wanna keep typing sudo. So let's type app, get install, open SSH pack server. Yep, that's it right there. And come on, come on, come on. There we go. If you want to automate this next time in the future without, you know, confirming the yes, you just put the tech lock. So you can see it installed. So let's see if we can get into our box right now. See how it is now allowing me to do it. And you got to remember, you got to log in with the username. Uh, typically, when you install uh, this program, um, I, I understood root, but it just kind of escaped me a little bit. You don't want to start off as root. The only way you can act, the only way you can log in as root is if you're, if you, you know, if I type uh, password, pass, you know, um, like this right now, instead of password to root, don't do that. Uh, don't give root a password. It just helps hackers uh, get into your system. So um, just do sudo and then switch over if, if you want to do that stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in. Wrong password. And that is pretty much it, my friends. Uh, so if you uh, check out my future videos, what I'll do is I'll show you how to establish uh, maybe a little bit of DDWRT and, uh, and help you with duck DNS. So for example, I can access uh, my system. Let me see, SSH home. And again, this is just a temp address, duckdns.org. Yeah, so it looks like I have the machine off right now. So that is why I cannot get in. Uh, yep, so I have that down right now. So this is another virtual machine that I have on my system. So, but anyways, uh, I hope this uh, video helped you a little bit. Um, so like now in the future, I can just minimize this and, and be on any computer and use terminal uh, in, my, in my house. Um, again, you're gonna use that .dns with traffic. Might be a little bit over your level, may not. Uh, and you'll be able to access your virtual machine with an actual domain name and a certificate. If you also have the time, please subscribe and like this video. I didn't realize the importance of it until you actually make these things. Uh, if you have any comments, any advanced comments, pro comments, uh, something maybe I'm overlooking, you know, by all means, please uh, post in the comment box. You know, we're all here to help each other. And as always, I tell everybody, thank you for donating. Thank you for your help. Thank you for pushing code. Uh, thank you for being part of the community. Um, like I said, this thing's only a year old as of, you know, Plex Guy's been about a year old, you know, uh, as of now. And uh, for some of you who've been following for a long time, it's been a uh, crazy ride. Other than that, I do appreciate your time.